All right. I think I'm live now. All right. Look, I turned 40 this year. I can't do all this technology stuff. I think it's getting to the part where I'm I it's past my uh prime. Um let me know if you can see me. Give me a comment to say that you can see me because I can see the comments. Good morning from Arizona. Hello. Hi, Julia. Hi, Suzanne. I think I'm live. <laughs> okay, we can see and hear you. Good. I'll take that as confirmation. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I practiced. I tried to go live on on Monday just to sort of give this a test run and I fully went through like my little five minute spiel and it didn't go live at all. So then I had to do it again. Um, so yeah, I've never done YouTube live. So this is kind of exciting. Um, I'm so happy you guys are here. I'm really excited to, to get a chance to kind of connect. Um, 40s are the best looking great. Oh, thanks guys. Colorado, Argentina. I can see you. I love technology. Good for you, Wendy. Hi, Jeanette. How are you? All right. Hey, everyone. I'm so excited. Okay. So should we get down to business? What do you think? Um, yeah, I'm excited to be live. Uh, and, you know, there's obviously a benefit to pre-recording things because editing and all that kind of stuff and also less technology potential for technology fails. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason that I'm live today because I'm going to be talking about something else I'm doing live a little bit later. So why not just be off the cuff, right? Um, so today I'm talking about how I design art licensing collections a little bit. Um, you know, I tend to focus if you take in, you know, start your service pattern business or you have looked at some of my YouTube videos, read my blogs, you probably know that I really tend to focus on the business side of things, the business side of having an art um, career, a brand, a surface pattern design career. Um, I don't really talk a lot about the art making side of it. Um, because business is, you know, there's a lot of people teaching how to create, you know, how to create with Adobe Illustrator and Procreate and all those things. And, you know, the business side does get neglected a lot. I think there's a real gap in that knowledge. And that's why I have focused on that. Um, but art is hard, you guys. <laughs> And, you know, I see people really ready and excited to hop into the business side, which I love because the sooner you start that, the better. But often they haven't fully mastered the marketable art bit, right? We are trying to, as a surface pattern designer, we are trying to get our art onto products. Um, if you're interested in art licensing, you're trying to get your illustrations, your patterns, your hand lettering onto products. And so we have to remember the marketability side, the is this going to sell? So, you know, creative business is really three made up of three parts, which is the art, obviously, the mindset, because that's always going to be an important part, um, and the marketing. And today I'm talking a little bit more about the art than I usually do. Um, so, you know, the problem, you know, building, building a portfolio can be really, really tricky. And I have been so lucky in my life and in my career to have so much guidance on that front. Um, if you don't know me, if you're just tuning in and you've never met me before, um, I studied surface pattern design in college. So I had four years, well, three of the surface pattern, one was just like general art, but, you know, four years of dedicated like professors telling me what works and what doesn't work, grading, doing it with my peers, um, learning all about that. And then I went to work for a home textiles company and eventually an apparel company, Baby Gap. and. All that time, I had art directors, creative directors, art VPs giving feedback to my work, right? And 
that helped me in my career in multiple ways. But the very first way that it helped me as I then went out on my own is that I didn't get too attached to my art, right? I understand that everyone has an opinion about art. And yes, I might have an opinion where I think it should stay one color or be one certain way. But I also understand that my art is was being used for home textiles and for you know baby gap and for all these other products and so therefore what the, the, those art directors um input was really helpful to me you know and and i was able to kind of let go of the outcome and just like let's see what happens let's try this and so many times did that make my artwork stronger even today i do for my art, I do about like 75% of my art income is freelance work. So I still have art directors who give me creative briefs, give me suggestions. I do what they suggest. I give it to them. They give me feedback. That is so, so valuable when it comes to the other 25% of my art income, which is art licensing. And the thing about art licensing is, you know, having that feedback, having those ideas, that stuff doesn't come when you're first starting in art licensing. If you've been in art licensing for a while and you have regular clients and regular contracts, you start to have that feedback. You start to have someone who will who will say, hey, this season we're looking for this. Um, here's the trends that we're working on. Um, you know, we really want to do something with this theme and, and you have those relationships, but when you're getting started with art licensing, you are on your own. Um, and that is, okay. I see we're doing fun. We're having fun in the comments, right? Um, so anyways, that is like something that, you know, we all kind of need help with. And I realized that when I first went by my, uh, went, um, solo, you know, I, I left my full-time jobs to be a freelancer and then started getting into art licensing in 2013, I was there to build my portfolio. I didn't have much of a portfolio. I realized like, but this is hard, like not having someone to can kind of like, you know, look at your work from an outside eye and give suggestions is really, really difficult. So I just want to show real quick, hold on, share screen here. There we go. This is not my like idea. I've seen this in different places. I just typed it out. But <laughs> this is what we find to be the creative process, right? We have an idea. We're super excited about it. This is awesome, right? Oh, yes. I can't wait to try this out, right? Then we get into our sketches. Or we get into our first drafts or, or whatever. And we start to say, oh, this is, this is tricky. I'm not sure how this is gonna work, right? Then we're deep into our first drafts and suddenly it's not gonna work, is it? Ooh, this is crap. Like, I don't know if we can do this. This is not necessarily gonna be wonderful. Um, it was such a great idea, but now I'm not so sure. And actually this, ooh, right? We get to that stage and then, if we have that perseverance, if we continue to push through, if we have some systems in place that can support us, we move forward, we get to mm, actually, okay, this might be okay. I've made some changes. I've done some updates. This, this couldn't maybe work out. This might be better than I thought it was going to be, right? Can anyone relate to that? And then hopefully, ideally, we get to the end. Sometimes, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I finish my collections and I say, this might be okay. And I stop at four. And then three months later, I go back and look at that collection and say, oh, you know, this is kind of awesome. So hopefully we get to that point where we think this is awesome again. But it is definitely a pendulum, right? We start with this is awesome and we get to, oh, this is not going to work. This is crap. And then we get back again. Um, so let me just, yeah, three and four over and over again. Oh, yes. It is hard to stick with it to get to five. Yes. Okay. Totally, totally, totally. Um, and so anyways, I just, 
it's like, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. So uh, the truth is I really always hated brainstorming the most because I knew how to fill in my sketches. Like once I came up with my ideas, I knew how to fill in my sketches, but the ideas and figuring out how to make drafts was really the hard part. And then filling it in was cool. And then like filling it in, making, you know, maybe if I did the sketches, doing it on Illustrator, right? But then it's like, okay, but then it's not done, is it? It's really tricky. This is the crap part. And and then it can be hard. So I'm curious, let me know um, in the in the comments, what have you guys been doing when you hit those that three and that four that, you know, this is crap, this is, oh, this is getting tricky. Ooh, this might be, this might be okay. What do you guys do? Like, how have you been developing your skills when you, if you don't have that sort of art director support? Have you been learning new programs? getting brushes on Procreate, hoping that that will kind of zhuzh things up, challenges like practice, really practice is always a good thing, prompts, your imagination, uh, putting your portfolio aside and working on finding clients instead, you know, what's kind of your, I'm really curious, what's your uh, go-to kind of solution when you, when you run into this? Do something else and come back to it. Yes, Kate, I love that. Walk away, work on something else. Keep playing and tweaking it. Um, start work on a different pattern. Yes. Classes, great. I have lots of ideas, but sometimes I get stuck on translating that into nice compositions. Totally. I can relate, Suzanne. Posting on Instagram, walk away. Yes. Practice, learning something new. Oh, good. Getting outside opinion from her husband. I push through and finish the design. I can always rework. Yes, Geraldine, that is an excellent, excellent um, step away for the moment. You guys have some good solutions. These are great. Step away for sure. That is like number one on my list. Binge watch all your videos. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> I love Karen. Go back to my why. Why am I doing that? That's my North Star. Oh, such a good idea. Okay, you guys got great suggestions. I need to be like, I'm going to copy this chat and uh, go from there. Nicole says she loves brainstorming. She struggles with the full motif sets. Help me push through or play until something clicks. Go back to my mood board. Okay, you guys, you guys have some systems. I like this. This is really awesome. Um, all right, so now I'm going to share my, I got some slides here. I want to share my screen real quick and talk a little bit about how I work through Let's see if I can get this to slideshow here. Okay. Um, so yes. So I want to talk about how I, my basic rundown of how I um, design a collection. And this is just kind of my process. Uh, and it probably sounds pretty familiar. You probably do a lot of these same things. Um, I choose a theme, right? And now I'll be talking later about successful licensing collections live, um, but you know, I obviously go into like all of these steps in much more detail, um, but choosing a theme can involve some research. It can involve um, having, it always involves some research, but whether I'm doing that research like right before I start my collection, or if I've done it, you know, six months ago and made a list of themes that I want to cover, um, that is you know obviously up for debate but themes often come from trends trends and themes um sort of go hand in hand you don't always have to have a trend for a theme it can be something more evergreen um but choosing that theme and deciding what am i even going to do uh with this uh collection is obviously my first step then i gather references so my references can be uh photographs um, of whatever objects I plan, motifs I plan to actually put in there. It can be like sort of a mood board, as someone was saying in the comments. Um, it can be even images of other people's artwork that I really like the style of. Now, that's something you have to kind of be careful with if you're new and you are prone to sort of really honing in on someone else's style, that could, that could be a problem. But um, you know, photographs and and other art styles and other potentially like uh, artwork that has great palettes um, might all be part of me gathering references. 
Then I dig into creating sketches and a plan. Okay. So obviously sketches are an important part of it. The plan part comes because if you look at my sketchbook and I will, and in successful licensing collections, I obviously give a peek into all those kind of pages and stuff like that. If you look at my sketchbook, you're going to see that I have a ton of like lists in my sketchbook because I'm writing down potential motifs, right? So if I chose my theme to be cottage core or something like that, or like prairie, then I'm thinking of all the things that could potentially go into a prairie motif, right? What are the things that could go there? Like wildflowers, um, mushrooms, like garden, maybe potentially garden areas, small florals, um, maybe actual prairie, like little house on the prairie type things, like actual cabins, um, potentially like scenes of fields, um, what kind of animals are in the prairie, right? I might be doing research on that. Um, and deciding, am I, is this going to be, what's the end product that I'm hoping for? In licensing, we don't always know what the end product is going to be. Again, if you are a seasoned uh, licensing artist, you have those um, clients, those repeating like licensing clients that say, we need this from you specifically, and you know what that end product is. But as we're getting started, we don't always know what is going to be picked up and by what manufacturer. So um, having something in mind can be very useful. We don't want to just say like, I'm just going to create a bunch of, you know, repeats, or I'm just going to create a bunch of illustrations without thinking like these illustrations might be for greeting cards, or I'm hoping these illustrations go on um, rugs for like welcome mats, or these patterns, I think I really would love to get onto quilting fabric. You know, we, we want to know what we're thinking about there. And I always try to have that in mind, even though I don't know for sure what things are going to land on. Then with sketches in mind, before I even start a draft, I choose a palette. And this palette could totally change. It definitely has many times. Um, but I don't just like create in sort of like the basic in basic colors or just like filler colors and then choose a palette afterwards. Um, I always want to start with a palette that's that I'm excited about and that I think is strong from the beginning. Again, I might need to to tweak towards the end, depending on how things go. But I want to start with colors I'm excited about because that helps me stay in that excited um, mindset as I'm designing because color is such an important part of, of the, the design to me. Then I dig into my rough drafts, starting with the main print or the main illustration, um, or just the one I'm, if, if it's illustrations, like if I'm doing a group of greeting cards or something like that, there's not necessarily a main illustration. Uh, if it's a set of note cards, you know, it's not like one's more important than another. Um, so in that case, it can be just the one that I have the strongest sort of connection to, or the one that I really, basically the one I think that I can do without getting too stuck in the weeds about that this is tricky part. <laughs> But if it's if it's um, repeating patterns, then I'm going to start with the main print. And in successful licensing collections, I talk about the elements of a killer main print or, you know, what you need for a collection specifically. All these things I go into way more specific specifics about. Um, but with the main print, of course, I'm looking at having the most amount of motifs using like pretty much all of my palette and really establishing a style for how I'm going to um, create uh, the rest of the collection. Then I start with a rough draft. Then I do a rough draft of like my secondary print or second illustration. Um, and, you know, before, obviously I'm trying to have a, a main print or illustration that I'm happy with and I feel like is done, but I'm not expecting that at step six, I move on to the second one before I get too caught up in how like perfected number five is, right? Then I go back and look at the two of them because once I've done the second one, and this is one of the benefits of collections. And, and this is another thing that I 
we'll talk about in successful licensing collections. One of the benefits of, of collections is that you make stronger artwork. And the reason that you make stronger artwork when you design in collections rather than designing a one-off is because you're building up steam on, on what the whole theme and colors and style of the, the work is. So once I've gotten to that second one and I've seen how that plays out and I look at how the first one looks and I kind of compare them, that really helps me make stronger pieces. That helps me go back to the main print and say, you know, in the second print or illustration, I tried this one little technique that really gave an extra like sparkle. Now I'm going to see if I add that into the first one, if that's going to give some extra wonderfulness uh, to that, that first one. You know, you kind of build up momentum on what you're creating. Um, while I'm sharing slides, guys, just so you know, I can't see the comments, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, I want I want to see what you guys are saying about all this, but just from how having the slides up, I can't um, can't currently see it. But I will go back and check the chat. So, do you guys is do you guys work like this, or do you like try to get through one fully and then get through another? I really like to to at least get two things down, um, potentially three, but two usually is where I start. And then I go back, revise and improve. Then I start filling in the other drafts, um, depending on how many prints or illustrations are going to be. And if I don't have a client in mind, like if it's not already being licensed. Like if I'm not doing it for my fabric partner or it isn't something that someone is requesting of me, I usually max out at about four, um, whether it's four prints, four illustrations, two prints and two illustrations. It can be a combo. This is also something I talk about in successful licensing collections. Um, but four is usually the max if I don't have someone who's doing it, unless I'm feeling real inspired and it's just like flowing and I'm just like, I've got this in me and I want to do it. That's cool. But if it's, if it's, you know, a bit of a like, Ooh, this is tricky. I'm probably going to stop at four. And the reason for that is because, um, you know, it's spec work. Honestly, I'm doing things hoping someone picks it up. Do I want to spend the time to make 18 designs and then have it not be picked up? No, that, that doesn't sound like a, a good use of my time. Um, again, it really depends on how your business is set up and your relationships with licensors and stuff like that. But for me, for getting started, I feel like showing four designs is enough to work with. I've had four designs for like greeting card collections. And then I've had licensors come back and say, you know, we're doing a six card set. So we need you to add two more. No problem. I can do that at this point, at that point. Um, but having the four gives enough of a like collection vibe that you, that people can, art directors can understand that more could be made from it. Then it's about pulling everything together for cohesion, right? So I did four designs, but do they look good together? Do they look really strong together? Obviously, I've, I've been probably working in the same palette. I've been trying to work in the same general style. Um, I, I The theme should kind of go throughout, um, but does it really look like a strong collection? And what do I need to do to really pull that together? So I have a whole process. Again, this is something that I talk about in successful licensing collections, but I have a whole checklist for assessing both my individual works, right? So when I, I'm looking at the step seven here, revise and improve, when I get to step seven, I, you know, I'm looking at my individual designs. Let me look at this main print. Let me look at this main illustration and boom, 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 boom. Here's the factors I want to assess and decide if I need to make changes about or if they are as strong as they can be. Right. But then I have a second checklist for collections. So now we have everything in front of us of what I think this is going, this collection is going to look like. What are the factors that need to be, you know, that are needed to pull this together? Um, then I create a sales sheet or some sort of way to uh, display this so that I can send it either to my agent or out to art directors. And that's that's pretty much the whole process. So I wanted to show you a couple examples here. Um, obviously, this is sort of the quick quick version, but um, as you can see on the left, I've got a sketch. This was my this is my Maui Mala 
um, collection. And I started with some sketches. You can see it's pretty detailed in those sketches um, for the floral. Um, and then my second idea is below that where I was going to do little um, uh, clusters. And then the other two ideas I had, I didn't end up going with all of them, but I had like a patchwork hula idea. And then at the bottom, because I was thinking this tropical, this, this is a collection from a, a little while back, but I was thinking, you know, it would be cool to have this like mid-century modern chairs that had like the upholstery, tropical upholstery. But as you can see, these are just ideas. Um, I started with the first draft. You can see I'm kind of laying in the solid color and you can see that top uh, floral, that top hibiscus is sort of like more detailed. Um, uh, the bottom, you know, the bottom one, I'm not finished with. You can, you can kind of clearly see that, but the, the top one, you can see, I have these, it's, it's a little bit more like sort of realistic, but also modern. Um, but then when you go to the collection, you can see that in the end, I, I ended up kind of simplifying. You can see the hibiscus has just not as much of a center and just kind of, I did some like fun stripes almost instead of the like kind of petally veins in the original draft. And you can see what my um, different uh, pieces ended up being. Um, I played around and things, things evolved. And then in the end, um, it got picked up to be uh, gift bags. So that was really fun. Um, here's another example. So this is actually kind of, I'd say, step two, because I originally designed this collection as wall art. So it was originally um, single like ice cream cone bouquets and, and Sunday bouquets. And I actually in Successful Licensing Collections Live, we're gonna talk about how that collection came about really from step one. Um, but my fabric uh, partner, Camelot, they saw the, that wall art and they loved that concept and they wanted to make it into a fabric collection. So now I already knew what the end product was going to be, right? So you can see, I took the sketches. I already knew that, I mean, I kind of knew the icons. I ended up having to create new icons because the wall art was only four, four like Sundays and cones and, and all that stuff, a popsicle even. Um, so it was really only four motifs. Um, so I ended up creating more. You can see in the corner, I had the palette kind of laid out of what I wanted to do. I did my first draft where everything was sort of up and down. And then you see how the collection evolved. Part of the reason the color changed was due to my fabric partner. So I was getting input from them because I had done a collection somewhat recently that had sort of a similar color feel. So they wanted to go a, a, like pull it a little bit away from that original, um, from that colorway. Um, so that's why that changed. But as you can see, I also changed the, the layout a little bit, made it more tossed, um, did popsicles, some bicycles, some sprinkles, etc. And then the final product was fabric. So that was really fun. I'm going to take a quick break here, stop sharing so I can check in on comments, make sure um, everything is still, hold on, let me just check real quick. I'm not sharing anymore, right? Um, yeah, I want to check in on comments and see if this all makes sense. Big fan of your art. I think being colors after works better for sometimes me depends on the group. Yeah. Sometimes it changes. It definitely changes. Fabric partner want. Yes. I usually draw all my motifs and decide what goes where that make that's, you know, definitely a way to do it. I'm always reworking and making sure patterns speak to each other. Great. Great. Super validating to hear that this is your process as well. Awesome. Start with references and palette first and then the rest. Yeah, I didn't show my references here. Um, that's something I go into more detail of, but I didn't want to have you guys sitting on here looking at every little thing. Um, start with a theme in mind, recolor the artwork. We'll try this method. How many colors do you use in each design? Um, so it depends on what the, the end, um, you know, the end product is, if it's going to be uh, fabric, then I keep it to sort of like 15 or less, but a lot of times less. Um, but if it's going to be something else, then I, 
I try to keep, you know, you can do tones and you can do textures and stuff like that, but I try to keep like really 15 is kind of like where I max out, I'd say. And again, it's not like it's 15 colors exactly. There might be tones and there might be little accents of something if it's, if it's a more textural piece and if it needs that and if it's wall art and whatever, but if I'm, but, you know, keeping in mind what the overall look of the uh, collections is going to be, I really want it to look cohesive. So 15 is total max. Um, love seeing the process. Awesome. The hula girls are awesome. Love the tiny, super unique re repeat. Oh, thanks, Stephanie. Good to see you. Uh, I'm struggling so much to come from a hero design to the motifs for coring patterns. Okay, awesome. How do I come up with ideas I want to use for the hero? Totally. Um, so those are those are awesome questions um, and something that I definitely go into. So let me continue with my my slides here, and I'll keep going. I just wanted to check in on the comments. I told you I can't can't do it both at the same time, unfortunately, which is a pain. All right. So back to this now. So, um, all right, so I had that whole list of how to do it. Mm, sounds easy enough, right? You know, think of a theme, do, do some sketches, make some drafts, make it happen, not that big of a deal. Uh, but obviously, there are lots of questions and roadblocks that happen along the way. Clearly, um, that's where the this is crap part comes from the beginning, from the creative process. And so I wanted to talk about two struggles that we have when we're creating work without, you know, an art director over our shoulder telling us, oh, can you change this? Can you do this? Um, these are two struggles that I see, see really commonly for myself and for others. The first is marketability. If you want to create art for products, I say this over and over again, but your work needs to be commercially viable. Um, you know, Everything's subjective, that is true, but seeing what's happening in the market is always an important step of your research. Um, you know, I definitely get the idea that designing in a bubble when you're first starting is important to sort of just figure out your own creative process and to play around and to get comfortable with everything and all that. I'm not saying you need to constantly be looking at what everyone else is doing or what's happening on every other product. But as we move to find clients and we want to license our work, we need to be a little bit more aware of our surroundings. So I have a video, a YouTube video about, you know, some top amateur mistakes uh, that I see. And one mistake, you know, this is just an, uh, like an example, is seeing people take real artistic license with um, edible uh, like motifs. So like fruits and vegetables, doing like blues and grays and colors that don't really happen in nature. That like try finding in a store, try, try, I beg of you, <laughs> I would love to see it. Try finding something in a store that has a a gray strawberry on it or a blue strawberry on it or or a gray pear like fruits tend to be it's not that you can't have like a pink strawberry or a magenta strawberry or maybe even like a purpley plummy strawberry but fruits tend to stay in the realm of like natural colors um maybe with a little bit more brightness and pop and fun so that's just one example but you know thinking along the lines of what's actually in stores is an important part of making sure your work is going to work for products, you know? And if you wanna license your work, your work has to work for products. So the other major hurdle that I see um, is that it's really hard to develop the self-critiquing muscle, right? And move beyond the the hurdles of the this is crap you know we get to the point we had this great idea I do this all the time like it's still hard it's something we have to keep continually uh working at and building that muscle for um but you know it is hard when you don't have any experience I I, I struggle with it and I've been doing this for 20 years right and I already told you at the beginning about how I've had so much input from art directors and professors and agents and all the things I'm so lucky um and yet and still it's you have to make your own decisions around around 
your licensing portfolio and your artwork. And that can be really, really tricky. So, you know, we get stuck. It can be easy to get to a point where we want to just throw it all away. And, you know, trust me, I, I understand that. Um, especially if we don't have any kind of like tools or methods to, to go through to check ourselves, right? So I just wanted to show you, this is an old collection, but I wanted to show you some of my rough drafts to give you an idea. Um, I wanted to do a coastal, like kind of like a bright coastal collection. This, like I said, this is quite an old collection. And the first draft is on the left. So I had done these sketchy motifs and these kind of like, you know, dry brush, paintbrush coloring things. And I did that first one and uh, I wasn't liking it. <laughs> it wasn't cute. I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't into it. And so I kind of went through and thought about it and decided to try adjusting the layout. And so then I decided to try sort of a grid layout. As you can see, the second draft was, was right there. And this was starting to feel better. I liked this better. I liked kind of the organization of it. Um, I, liked, I liked the boldness of the squares in the background. I liked the texture of the background but it still wasn't quite right. And I was still working through it. And in the end, this is what I landed on, um, which as you can see is, you know, I'm, I ended up just going in and fully changing the motifs to something more blocky and simple and um, with, you know, a little bit of, little bit of accent here, some outlines, some flat. So I ended up changing things around completely so that it kind of fit in. And this made me much happier than the first two. And I got over and in the end, I was at a point where this, this is awesome. I was happy with this. Um, now that I've done it so long ago, obviously at this point, I'm sort of like, well, I can make some changes, but we're always going to be there. It's okay. That's fine. But being able to self-critique and change what we've started with. So this is the left side. That's a long cry from the final product, right? Sometimes you have to do that work to get where you're going. So do you struggle with these things? Um, if so, guess what? I'm always about something actionable. Let me help you out. Um, I'm super thrilled because I am opening a live version of a course uh, successful licensing collections is a course that I made in 2017. At that point, I had a portfolio of, I went from a portfolio when I started licensing of about like five designs, like literally I had almost nothing to when I signed with my agent to at that point in 2017, I had about 60 collections. So I had made a lot of progress. I had done a lot of things. I had some, some, some methods and I still really believe in all of that stuff. But now I'm at 110 collections. My process hasn't changed significantly, but I've definitely learned a few more things uh, in the last five years. And I've also been able to get my eyes on a lot more beginner work because now I have students who, um, you know, I do portfolio reviews and all that stuff. So I have this sort of lifeline to see what it's like when you're a beginner, what your thought processes might be, and kind of dig into those problems. Um, so I'm really, really, really excited to update successful licensing collections. And not only am I updating it, but I'm doing it live. So I have two editions of this successful licensing collection. And I'm going to tell you about the two different editions now. Um, so the first is the live edition. This is the main course, basically. So the live edition is going to be three Zoom teaching sessions, right? So it'll be kind of like this, only in a private room, um, not for all of YouTube to see, um, with Q&As at the end. So I'm just going to be out here with my slides and with my examples and with my techniques. And we're going to be doing something like this uh, for um, three weeks in a row, starting September 1st. So Thursday, September 1st, 8th and 15th. It's going to be at 2 p.m. Eastern, but the recordings will be available. So if you can't make it live, that is totally fine. If you sign up for the live edition, no matter whether you can show up or not, you will have access to those recordings and you'll see all the updates that I've made and you'll see the whole class unfold. So the three weeks we're going to talk about 
the sort of getting started before we even start our drafts or anything like that. Week one, we're talking about a little bit of overview of licensing, uh, why we design collections, um, thinking about end products, thinking about themes, thinking about trends. And then the second week we go into starting our drafts and what specifically is involved in a collection, what kind of things we need to know. We talk about palettes, we talk about rough drafts. And then the final week we go into all that self-assessment stuff. We talk about all the things that I do to look at my drafts and figure out what, how to make them better and how to sort of wrap up a collection, bring it together and then be done with it. Um, so then you'll have a year of access to all three recordings if you sign up for this live edition. So you'll be able to watch this over and over again and assignments to help you stay on track in designing your collection. So that at the end of each session, we have an assignment, you know, which I'll give you. I'm not going to be checking your work. You're in charge of it. Um, but you can stay on track and you can create a collection throughout the month of September along with the lessons. And then most, not most importantly, most importantly is my shining face on live Zoom chatting with you guys. But second most importantly is downloadable assets and resources. I have a lot of uh, assets that are really useful to creating collections like lists of evergreen themes, um, you know, how to find trends, uh, where you can look for trade shows and things like that, that can help you give, get ideas around themes, um, checklists of how to self-assess, all that kind of stuff. All right. So the live edition is $149 and it is available now. You can sign up today. Um, I'll give you the link at the end. Um, and like I said, sign up today. The registration is for the next week, uh, but you know it doesn't start until September. So we're on our back to schools vibes. Now I want to tell you about the really exciting. Okay, the live one is exciting, but I'm really excited about the party edition. Um, but first, water. Got to stay hydrated, people. All right, so the party edition. Oh, I'm excited about this. This is limited, okay? This is only 35 people because we, we got to have crowd control. Um, and actually, I think I've already sold five or six slots, so we're, we're counting down. Um, so the party edition includes, besides all the stuff that I just talked about. So as, as someone who signs up for the party edition, you're going to go to the, all the live classes or have access to the recordings if you can't make it live and whatever. But you're also going to be invited to two show and share party sessions where we show our progress on our collections and provide feedback. So those assignments that I'm talking about um, that I'll be giving to everyone, the party edition, we're actually going to look at what you did. I'm going to hold you accountable. And I'm also going to show you what I'm doing because I'm going to make a collection this coming month as well. And so I'm going to show you my references and my rough drafts and my sketches. And I can't wait to see yours. And we're going to chat about it in in the sessions um those sessions will be tuesday september 13th and 20th uh at 11 a.m eastern so we'll have gotten through i'm just doing the math in my head here well we'll have already done two live sessions two out of three of the live sessions um, before we start showing our work. So we kind of have a little ramp up where we learn the background, then have time to do the assignments, and then we start showing and sharing on the 13th. You'll also have access to a student community if you're part of the party edition, because not everyone will necessarily be able to make both of these show and share parties. So we can be showing and sharing in the community. And this is not on Facebook, this is on Mighty Networks. So you'll be able to show um, your progress and say, hey, look, I worked on this. Um, you know, this is what I'm thinking for my references. What do you guys think? Da, 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 da. Plus everything from the live edition, as I said, the Zoom teaching, the access to recordings, and all the downloadable assets and resources. So that is $219. And like I said, limited to 35 partygoers. I think I've had at least five or six sales this morning. So um, you know, that number is, is ticking down. So if you are interested in the one where we're actually working on these collections together, definitely sign up for that now. Um, you can go to elizabethsilver.com slash SLC live. Okay. And you're going to see this 
uh, this is part of the web page, right? And so you'll go here and if you want to do the class part, join the live edition. If you want to do the show and share and, and do a collection together, join the party edition, right? So click, you'll click whichever one of these is appropriate and it'll take you right to the checkout page. Okay. Um, let me take a break, check on some comments, and then I'll get back and give you a little bit more, a few more like FAQ details. Okay. Let me just real quick, see how the, this class looks amazing. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Um, so Fresh Portfolio was an amazing course. Oh, thank you. Yes, that was a lot of fun. Why not? I see plenty of artists if they're pulling something. Um, it depends on how you guys are talking here. You totally can use motifs and heroes. What is the hero? That's something I talk about, Joe, in the course for sure. Obviously get, get very specific. Um, the boldest, brightest leader of your collection. I like that. Oh, yay, party. So excited. Anastasia is going to be at the party. I can't wait. All right, let me, um, you can put any other questions in the comments, but I'm going to go over a few more things and then I'll wrap up and leave us to our, leave us to what we're doing here the rest of our day. I've got a lot of client work I need to do. I'm, I'm all up on this, but I got client work to do. All right. Boop. All right. So like I said, elizabethsilver.com, SLC dash live. Um, it's also like if you go to elizabethsilver.com, I've got like banners on the top and stuff like that. So registration is open until September 25th, which is next Thursday. Um, the reason it's obviously the reason it's closing is because for the party, especially I need to know who's going to, who's coming to the party y'all. I need to organize that. And if you sign up today, um, basically you have access to a welcome video for whether it's the live or the party edition, you're going to see the welcome video and like the dates and the links and stuff, but you're not going to see much else. That's all coming throughout September. Um, and if you sign up for the party edition, you're going to get an email um, later, like closer to September 1st, inviting you to the community. So you're not getting instant access to the community. That stuff is coming in the next week or two. So it's not, you can, you don't have to worry about it at this immediate moment. Um, if you have taken successful licensing collections, the older edition, if you have taken it in the last two years and you are interested in doing this party edition, Check your emails because I sent you an email yesterday <laughs> for people who have taken successful licensing collections who have signed up in the last two years. The alumni are invited to the party and I have a discount code for you because you already are signed up for the class. So um, check your emails for that discount code if you don't have it. Um, if you can't find it anywhere, you can e you can reach out and email me and we'll you know check that you are on the list of having purchased in the last two years. Um, so if you're an alumni, I have a code for you. Um, first come, first serve on the party edition. I wish I could specially pick my party people and like just reach out to all my, my fun designer uh, students and friends and say, let's come. But it is what it is. Um, and yesterday, like I said, the uh, I sent out a message to the alumni and also people who are on my wait list. So like I said, there's already um, some, you know, the spots are counting down already. I, I don't like to be like, you only have 20 seconds, but you have more than 20 seconds. But, but you know, it really will. Um, don't wait till the end if you want to be part of the show and share party. All right. And then if you go to the website, the SLC-Live, there's all these frequently asked questions. Um, but I just wanted to go over a couple of them because I know people don't always like to read and you might have these questions right now. And let me just tell you real quick. So let's just go over these three right here that are highlighted with the arrows. What skill level is this course for? So in this course, I'm talking all about how to create collections, but I am not teaching you how to design. Like if you don't know how to draw, if you don't know how to use any sort of, um, like you can be a traditional artist. It's okay if you paint rather than, you know, like use Photoshop or Illustrator, that's fine. If you use Pro, it doesn't matter what software you use or if you do like analog painting or whatever, but I don't teach you how to create artwork. I don't teach you how to put things into repeat in this course. I assume that you already have those skills. Um, if you need to put it in repeat, it might just be illustrations. Um, but I, I assume that you have the skills to create art 
And this is about making that art marketable and making that and having a process in place to build the strongest collection that you can make, right? And so we talk about art licensing, we talk about the process of picking a, a good theme, we talk about trends, we talk about the drafts, we talk about that, but we don't talk about like, okay, and now to cut control C, like we're not, we're not doing like the technical aspect of creating artwork. Um, is this course only for pattern designers? Great question. So glad you asked. <laughs> um, you know, I call myself a surf. I am a, a professional surface pattern designer, but surface pattern design is not always about patterns. I promise you this. Art for products is actually not about pattern design that often. It obviously depends on the product, but a lot of the times, and I know I, I can tell you Nicole's in the chat right now. I can't see the chat. No, Nicole's doing it. But a lot of the times it's about the motifs. It's about the illustrations. It's about what's happening. It's patterns are not always the most important part. Like I said, if I know I'm designing for a fabric partner, then, um, then, you know, I'm doing patterns. And this is I just have some random collections around here, pumpkin spice. You know, I'm doing patterns. But then um, if I don't know, if you haven't, if you're getting started with licensing and you don't have those partners yet, you might not be doing patterns. So if you're into illustration, if you're into hand lettering with a little bit of illustration, if you're into greeting cards, whatever it is, if you're into something where you want to get your art on products, this um, this course will work for you. And then the last question that I'm going to talk about is, I'm not able to do this right now. People always send these to me. I can't do this right now. Is this the only time it's going to be offered? Um, so the truth on that one is, who knows? <laughs> We're going to see how it goes. I really, I'm not trying to be like, uh, you know, evasive. I really, truly don't know. But the plan, the current plan is to do this live and to do the show and share party live. And then to have the recordings of the lives be the new updated version of the course that you can take at any time. So it wouldn't be live, but it might be available to purchase at a later date. Um, so it's not to say that some, some version of successful licensing collections will be available, but the actual live, like you can come, you can ask questions. Um, I say hi to you in the chats. Uh, we look at your work if it's the party version. Um, that part, I, I don't know. And I, I can't, can't say, um, these other questions that you're seeing on the screen, you can look at on the page. Um, and the one last thing is I almost, I'm going to stop my share now. I almost renamed this course because, um, I, I don't do like my art licensing is 25% of my income. Okay, I, I want to be upfront about that. I'm not a licensing superstar. We've got some licensing superstars in the chat right now, um, but it ain't me. <laughs> I don't make a ton of money on art licensing. But the reason I didn't change the name of the course is because my art licensing collections, when I create with art licensing in mind, I'm creating for product and I'm creating for being marketable. Okay, so that can be used in a number of different ways. That can be used if you do print on demand. If you create a great art licensing collection, you can use that in Society6 or Spoonflower or Redbubble or whatever your print on demand place is. Um, that can be used for a gorgeous portfolio to get you work as an in-house designer or as a freelance designer, which is what I do. I use my art licensing portfolio and I put my art licensing work out on my Instagram and on my website. And that's what people see who then contact me to work in freelancing. So I use my art licensing to get freelance work. You could use it to use it as a portfolio to get um, in-house work. You could you, you could create an art licensing collection and then in the end of the day, sell it outright. You can do that. You can use, um, if you create a really strong art licensing collection, you can use that for your own products. If you want to make products, have a little shop, print out cards or make stickers or mugs or whatever you want to make, you can do that too. So this isn't really just about art licensing. I talk about art licensing at the beginning, but it's really about making a saleable, marketable collection. So if that's something you're interested in, art for products, this is for you. 
All right. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got for questions here. Totally use motifs. Class, that's amazing. Sounds fun. How much time are you allowing for live critique sessions? 35 people is a lot. Great, great question. So all of these classes, um, all right. So for the live classes, not the critique, but the live, because I'm updating it, I don't really know how long it's going to take. The original course is like two and a half hours altogether, um, but I'm breaking this up into three and I'm updating it and I'm live. So, you know, I tend to talk. Um, I try to be succinct because we, we don't have time for, you know, I try to be direct, but I might go off a little bit um, if there's questions and stuff and there will be time for questions. So I'm budgeting 90 minutes per session for the live session. For the critiques, great question. Um, 35 people is a lot, but here's what I know about everything. <laughs> here's what I know from two years of experience of selling live, like critique type things. Um, I will sell 35 spots and then 20 to 15 to 20 people will actually show up and show their work. The other people will be too shy. They will just be in the background. They will get distracted with their work, whatever. So I'm budgeting 90 minutes. But that being said, if 35 people, and I hope they do, I want to party, y'all. If 30 people, 35 people show up to these live calls, we will make it work. If it, we extend it to two hours and we just have to go a little bit more quickly um, and some of it has to happen more in the community or whatever. If it doesn't work, I will make it work and figure out different ways to go around it. But what I'm, I chose 35 because I know that it will be 20 people max who are actually doing this work. So I want it to be you though. Mary, if you sign up, it better be you. I want you at that party. <laughs> um, all right. Late to the party, but I'm here, Roxy Foxy. All right. Does anyone have any other questions? Any other questions? Or did we just do it? Oh, it's hot in here. You know, I have a sunroom. <laughs> it gets hot. When I close all the doors, it gets pretty hot. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, let's see. Um, let me just really quick put in. Sorry. I'm typing out the link because this is where I'm at. Let me just put the link in here and you can guys can go and check it out and see if it makes sense for you. Mary's going to be there. She said it. <laughs> uh, Jennifer. Oh, sorry. I missed this question. Jennifer said, I took the previous class. How is this different? Um, so Jennifer, if you took the previous class in the last two years, you got an email and you can join the party part of it. Um, the party part will be actually like us creating collections together. We're going to be showing and critiquing and seeing, you know, as the process goes through. So that's very different. Um, the live course itself, it will be different. I'm updating it, but it is based on the same, most of the same concepts. So it's not like you know, a whole new course. It's it's an update. So I definitely have more things to say about certain things. I'm going to hit harder on certain things. There are things I'm beefing up and there are things I'm scaling back on. Some of the information, um, you know, that I gave before, I just had a little bit of a different like lens um, for it. So I'm going to be talking about slightly different things, but in general, the whole process and the whole, the things you do to find themes, find trends, find palettes, um, critique your work, the basic structure of that hasn't really changed. It's just going to look a little fresher because I've got a new haircut. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, I would love to do that party, but it, but it may just be the live. Fair enough. I feel you, Jeanette. We'd love to have you either way. Always love to have you on calls. Um, all right. So that's it. It's so good to chat with you guys. I love to see it. I love, love the live streaming. Um, I'm glad that the technology worked out. And now I have to go. I'm designing window clings for Christmas today. So that is what's on my agenda for the rest of the day. I'm very excited. Um, but I, I'm looking forward to, to this live. Start September 1st. This registration is open for another week. Um, I'm really looking forward to teaching this and uh and telling you 
all the things and, and giving you the resources so that you can repeat the process and you hopefully that, guess what? You're not gonna avoid the, this is craps section of the creative process with this class. You will have that, but I'm hoping it's faster, it's shorter and you can see beyond it, right? You can see that like, okay, this is just part of the process. We're just gonna keep moving. I'm gonna keep going. We're gonna make this better. This is might be okay. And now this is awesome. I wanna make sure we always get to the, this is awesome at the end, okay? So that's the plan for successful licensing collections. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Nicole. Y'all are the best. Nervous to share. Well, we will talk about that. For real, Suzanne, we will, because I get it. That It isn't easy. It isn't easy. So we will talk about that. If you're in the party edition, we'll chat about it. And you know, I'll give you a little pep talk on that. <laughs>